Acne can be really tricky to remove, especially when there's redness surrounding the area. In this video, I'll show you a great technique to remove acne and reduce any remaining redness. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, I've included a download link to a similar image in the video description. From that same link, you can also access a graphic that gives you all of the steps that you need to follow to remove acne. Our first step for creating flawless skin is in-painting. The in-painting brush is a great little tool that allows you to paint over an area and remove whatever you've painted over. To use this tool, I'll first create a new pixel layer. That way, all of our edits will be done on a separate layer so that we can turn it on and off to see the before and after. With our new layer, I'm going to come to our healing tools over here and press on this little gray triangle to open up this menu. Then, even if you have any of these other tools currently selected, you can come down and select the Impainting Brush tool. And as a final step before we begin inpainting, make sure that you come to the top of the screen to the context toolbar and change it from sampling the current layer to the current layer and below. That way, our brush will know to take information from our lower layer as well. Now, we can zoom in and paint over the blemishes to remove them. It's okay if there's a little redness left behind. The next few steps will take care of that. Right now, we're just looking for areas of strange texture like these, and we can just paint over those to remove them. To adjust the size of your in-painting brush, you can use the bracket keys on your keyboard to make it larger or smaller. When you're done in painting, you might still have these red patches, and that's okay. If I turn this off, you can see how it looked before, and what a difference this has already made. Our next step for creating flawless skin is to use the healing brush tool to blend the skin. Using the healing brush will reduce this redness. First, I'm going to create another new pixel layer. Then, I'll go back to our healing tools, open the menu, and then select the healing brush tool. Just like the in-painting brush, I'll come to our context toolbar and change it to sample from the current layer and below. To use this tool, hold down Alt on your keyboard and then click to sample an area. With your area sampled, you can paint over an area with red skin to bring the better skin into the area. You can see as I'm painting that the redness is being reduced and the skin looks naturally smoothed into the rest of the skin. We don't want any patchy areas that make it look obvious that we've removed something. I'm sampling from multiple source points as I go, and I'm trying to keep the source points as close to the blemish as possible. That way, I'm sampling from a good texture of the skin that makes sense to be placed over the new area. I'll turn this off to see our progress so far. I'm going to continue this process around the rest of her face. Now 
Now that I've finished the process of healing over this red skin, I think her skin is looking so much better. We can select both of these layers by holding down shift and clicking. Then we can turn them both off to see the before and the after. That's looking so much better. Now, before our next step, I want to show you one more situation that you might have on the skin. I'm not sure if this really counts as acne, but I can see a lot of deep pores on her nose, and I think it'd look better if some of these were removed. I don't think I want to remove all of them, I still want her nose to have natural nose texture, <laughs> but I do want to reduce the spottiness here. There are a few ways that you can do this. You could either in-paint over the nose to remove these spots, or you could use the healing brush to sample nearby areas, and then remove the spots. While doing this, I would say that it's best to start from the outside of the patchy area and work your way inward. If you try starting from the inside, you won't have a good area of skin to sample in the surrounding area, so it's best to stay toward the outside and work your way in. I'll turn that off to see a before of the nose. And here's the after with just reducing some of the pores. Now you can keep going and try to remove all of the pores, or if you think you've gone too far and you'd like to bring some of them back, you can always come to your eraser tool and erase the area to bring the pores back. Right now, I have my eraser's flow set to 15%. That way, when I'm painting, I'm not bringing the full deepness of the pores back, just a little bit of it. So now you can see the before and after, and I think that is looking so much better. Our next step for creating flawless skin is to apply a recolor adjustment. I've noticed a lot of times when someone has a lot of acne on their face, there's a lot of redness on the skin. This redness can make other parts of the skin look more yellow. You can see that by looking at the redness on her cheek and then yellowness surrounding the mouth and on the neck. To even out these color inconsistencies, I'll come to the adjustments and then select a recolor adjustment. This adjustment takes a single hue and applies it over an entire image. I only want the recolor adjustment applied to her skin. So for now, I'll close out of this. Then I'm going to invert this layer so that it's being applied to nothing. I'll press Command or Control i to hide this layer, and you can see on the layer icon we now have this black mask. So to reveal the adjustment, I'll select my paintbrush, and then I can paint in white over the skin to reveal the recolor adjustment. I'm going to make sure that I have a 100% opacity and flow and 0% hardness on my paintbrush. Then all I need to do is paint over her skin. As I'm painting, I'm being careful to avoid her eyebrows, eyes, and her lips and teeth because I only want this applied to her skin. If you ever paint too much, all you need to do is paint in black. As a shortcut, you can press X on your keyboard to switch to black, then paint, and then press X to switch to white again. I 
I now have a pretty good outline of where I want this adjustment to be applied. So to fill in the rest, I'll hold down Alt on my keyboard and then click on my recolor adjustment. Now I can easily see the rest of the spaces that I need to fill in to make sure this is applied to her entire skin. With that all filled in, you can return to your normal view of this image by pressing on any other layer. I'll return to my recolor adjustment because I noticed that I did forget her other arm here. I want to make sure the skin is consistent all around her body, so I'm just going to fill this in. Now that we have this adjustment masked onto her skin, I'll double click on our recolor adjustment icon, and now we can change the hue. I'm going to bring the hue over to the right until we have a nice orange color. Then I'm going to decrease the saturation until it looks more like a skin color. You can also adjust the hue if you think it's looking too red or too yellow. And you can adjust the lightness which will just make the color darker or lighter. I don't really like how that looks, so I'll keep mine set to zero. Next, I can see that this is looking a little intense, so I'm going to change our blend mode over here from normal to hue. Sometimes it can be hard to tell, but let me just zoom in and turn this recolor adjustment off to see the before, and here's the after. I can definitely notice a difference with the yellow areas of her skin looking a lot more even now. As a final step for creating flawless skin, we're going to add a little bit of color back into the face. To do this, I'm going to make a new pixel layer, and then we'll paint on top of this separate layer. So the reason I want to add color back into the face is because there are certain areas of the face that naturally have redness to them. This includes the nose, cheek, and the ear. And if I turn off the recolor adjustment, you can see what I mean. Because we've taken the redness away, her skin doesn't look as lifelike. I'm going to make sure I have my paintbrush tool selected. Then I'm going to sample the lip color. And then I'll apply that color to my paintbrush. Next, I'm going to set my flow very low that way, I can gradually paint this redness onto the face. I'll start by painting a little bit over the ear. Then I'll come down into the cheek and the nose. Right now, if you look closely, we're actually losing a bit of skin texture because we painted over the skin. So I'm going to change the blend mode to hue. That way we can still see the skin's texture through this paint. If it's looking too strong to you, you can always lower the opacity of your layer. So here's the before and after of that, just adding a little more color into the face. And now I'll select all of my layers to see a complete before and after of this image. It's amazing what the healing brushes can do for your images, but I still have so much more that I'd like to share with you, and you can find that in my course, Retouching 101. This course is designed to give you the best retouching techniques to make your images look beautiful. You can find that course linked in the video description. 
Thanks for watching, my friends, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.